Davidson for Lester. Nico Mueller. Geary. Patrick Geary, the point shot. Game winning goal. Number two starts the celebration. Davidson was in the vicinity for the deflection, but it might be his as well. Moneyball fans, I am very excited for today's episode. I have with me here Patrick Geary. Patrick Geary was just drafted by the Buffalo Sabres. Man, welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Uh, my pleasure. I was really excited about this one. You know, I, I looked up and I and I saw it was an alert on my phone and it said Buffalo, New York, or maybe even as uh, specific as Hamburg, New York native Patrick Geary drafted by Sabres. And my eyes lit up and I was like, <laughs> what? Who is this guy? You know, I'm yeah. like, I do not know who this is. And, you know, then the, the gears all started turning in this crazy head of mine. And I'm like, man, I got to get this guy on number one. And, and number two, then I wanted to research. And man, I, I checked it out and you're a stud, dude. You're 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 doing things back there at D. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how did that, first of all, tell me how, tell me about the feeling of getting drafted. Let's just start there. Um, actually, I was kind of just like sitting on my couch. I was going to go golfing in the morning just because I knew I would kind of go in the later rounds. You know, I kind of had my team that I was looking at and then it started pouring that day. So me and my girlfriend, yeah. we went to the mall because I honestly, if I got picked, I knew camp was going to start, start the next day. And then I had to be at school four days after. And then I realized Buffalo did have a pick and it was it was them and one other team in the sixth round that I kind of knew and kind of just like was sitting there, looked down at my phone and because I, I had a feeling, but I didn't want to look at the TV directly the whole time. So I was kind of like looked down and I like kind of side eyed it and just saw my name pop up and obviously pretty happy. Wait, so you find out when we find out like, the, the, yeah, you, you didn't get a call ahead of time? No. Yeah. Get yeah. out of here. Really? Yeah. Yeah. And Man, then I so I've, I've going to be, but, and then Kevin Adams, so. He called me like two minutes later, but yeah. I think okay. That's well, tell me, tell me a little bit about that process. So I've had a lot of different guests on who have kind of told me the draft process. Some of them have said specifically, like, I knew I was going X round to this team. Others said I was, you know, these, these teams showed interest and then a completely out of left field, you know, let's put it in baseball world. Like, you know, I had the, the Mets and uh, the Nats looking at me and out of <laughs> left field, the Red Sox drafted me, you know? So yeah. When you say you kind of had a good idea, give me a little bit of background there as to what you're saying. So these teams were contacting you, said we are interested. Yeah, I kind of, I probably had around like eight teams kind of just call me, do interviews. Oh, that's awesome. Stuff. Honestly, I didn't hear from Buffalo in the whole year. Like I was like, I right, like kind of weird, but like also like they knew who I was. Like Kevin Adams coached me. Yeah. Tim Kennedy, he's in player development. He was my yeah. legit head coach. Like, yeah. so the whole Sabres organization knew me in a way, just because they've all coached me kind of here and there or whatever. So maybe I was like, oh, okay, like that could be it. And then during the combine, they're like, hey, you want to come in, do a little bit of a workout? When you walk into Bella Pizza, right from the jump, you can toucan Sam it and your nose can lead you to the delicious smell of buffalo pizza and wings. This place is no joke. Enormous subs, all kinds of pizzas that you could possibly imagine, from taco pizza to chicken finger pizza, which is pretty famous here in Buffalo. Very friendly staff, and when you come on in, you can see how it's set up here. We have some big screens if you want to dine in. Pizza and wings and anything else you could ask for, Bella Pizza for us and then interview whatever i was like yeah like for sure and right. i kind of just went in there did a little small workout they just had us doing a few jumps vertical long jumps stuff like that and then just had an interview and like it was like weird with them because i knew them right. so close right. and it was like it wasn't like i was never nervous at any point i think that kind of helped too, just kind of yeah. be myself and just show them who i am now and whatever so yeah i had them and then just a few other teams but yeah you never know what the draft I mean, it could change in a second did you do any type of Zoom with any organizations prior to? Like, then, so the Sabres had you in, but did you speak to any other owners or, or anything, like, as far as face-to-face? -face? Uh, yeah, like, we had a, I had a few scouts come to, like, Michigan State, where I okay. was at during the school year. Cause just during the summer, I had, like, one or two phone calls, but it was mostly in person or with Buffalo, yeah, in person. <laughs>
Yeah, that's, that's really wild, man. And I think the whole dynamic with Buffalo having seen you, and you made a really good point. You know, it was just, you didn't have the nerves, you know, going in there. It almost, it almost felt natural. It almost felt yeah. like, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, it was fun. Like, I was skating there every day. Like, I work out with all those guys. And yeah, yeah it was kind of crazy. But. So for, for anyone, and there is a lot of parents, and I'm still up in the air with this, as far as which organization and, and is there a benefit to this and to that? I think there is to a certain point, right? You're a St. Francis guy, correct? Yep. And you played hockey there and lacrosse? No, I playing for the Junior Sabres. They never really let you. Oh, play. okay. You were Junior Sabres and lacrosse at St. Francis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, because you can't really do both. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Uh, that'd be real great, man. That would put Bo Jackson to shame if you were doing yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. The Junior Sabres, just so if we got hurt or something, it would have been yeah. a disaster, so. Yeah, more of a liability. Let's hop into Michigan State for a minute, man. Congratulations. You know, yeah. the first thing I want to say, man, what a filthy season. That was just, you know, watching some highlights over the last couple of days, knowing we were going to talk. Tell me how that game-winning goal felt, man, against, against of all teams, the rival. And, and you know, I kind of saw by the video what it felt like with you, you know, gloves in it. But, man, what a feeling, right? Yeah, I mean, especially going into that game, you come in as a freshman, you don't really hear, like, you hear about the rivalry, but you don't know what it feels like. And, like, you talk to the other guys, you're like, just wait, like, game one against them, like, you'll see it. And then, unfortunately, game one, they come into our place, they beat us 7-1. Yeah. So we're like, all right, like, here it is, here's the rivalry, like, this is how it starts, like, whatever. So, yeah, like, every game going in against them, like, you, you felt it. It was a championship game, and then... That game just ha was a championship game. So, I mean, you kind of can't look at it like that. Definitely going in there nervous. And it was at home, too, which, I mean, it was crazy. The atmosphere was nuts. And then, yeah, the goal is kind of just crazy. I mean, I don't know. You just get, like, lucky sometimes. And that's that's exactly what happened with me. We, I was out there with the senior line, and they do everything right. They had a guy net front. The goalie couldn't even see the puck. I mean, Bro, I, I love I love the humility. I love how humble the humility. Because I heard the announcer right after say, he really teed one up and lasered it. And I'm like, no, he didn't. I mean, wasn't, yeah. it was more of a wristy, wasn't it? Yeah, like I just kind of caught it behind me a little bit and just turned, like, just whipped it at the net. I was just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it, it wasn't like somebody set it up for an Ovechkin over there. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, no, like, like I just got, yeah, I just swiffed it at the net. And, it's just and it was pretty. Like, it was pretty, you know, it went top corner. But like you yeah. just said, you had no idea where that thing was going at that point. No idea. It was and like, I hey, let's get it to the it. net. Hope it yeah. bounces off a leg. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was going into the corner at first just because yeah. my head was down the whole time I shot. And then, yeah. but, you know, you just get lucky sometimes like that. And yeah, I mean, you just black out after. Like, I don't even like remember anything until like i'm in the yeah. huddle like oh, I, dude, I, I know that feeling and i'm so happy for you like I, yeah. I know that you know that feeling of just it's it's you know by the time you get into that huddle and then it's kind of the euphoria almost wears off and then you realize that you were the one that just scored the game winner yeah like it's crazy then you gotta go do a tv interview and you're like wait wow. yeah like, and yeah. then it's right back to work yeah, yeah you know because you guys then had another game like people think we had a crazy celebration we're like no we got to get back to work we got to get, get right back on a horse and grind man and, and, and yeah exactly true athletes the ones that get drafted and the ones that go a lot further and i can tell right now by by the way you know kind of your i don't know man i can i can read it i'm telling you like i, I have this natural knack for reading things and people <laughs> You're going places for sure, you know, and and it's not only the physical attributions. I mean, you what six one buck eighty five something? That, is that fairly accurate? Where they put you? You seem a little bigger to me. Oh uh, no, no, I'm six foot. Oh uh, really? Yeah, yeah. And then I was real light this summer. I was like one seventy seven. So that our coach was like, you got to put on some weight. So I'm at like one ninety right now, which is kind of yeah. big for me, just because the way I play and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I was told I was too small to be drafted, and then like, I don't know, it's crazy. Yeah, man. And that's, you know, I guess defenseman, right? You kind of look at Yeah, it's the defenseman aspect. Yeah. Right, right. And and I still like, you know, it seems to me and, and I'm glad we kind of segue to this. Uh, like you came into that lineup that is just stacked with talent. man. Yeah. And, and they wanted you playing right away. You know what I'm saying? And you're kind of a do it all. So everything I had just described, you're a hybrid is what I would call you. Is that fair mm -hmm. to say? How do you how do you describe your own game? Yeah, I mean, Kind of in a way. I mean, I, the coaches here, because we we have so much talent on the offensive side and defensive side, especially last year with Artie and our captain Nash, whatever, like they're super offensive. They, so they were kind of just like, you don't need to be offensive. Like you could just stay back, play defense, like whatever. So that's kind of the role they kind of wanted me to turn into. And I kind of like 
I kind of was that, like, especially at the end of the year, like, I didn't really go up during the rush that much. Like, okay. they called it me going cowboy. If I were to go nuts and join the rush, it was like, oh, you went cowboy, like, whatever, and I'd get back to the bench. But you were kind of used to playing that way, though, right? I mean, you, oh, you, yeah, yeah, you yeah, were yeah. playing offensively. So so did you embrace that? Did you like the, you know, sitting sitting back on defense? Because it's tough sometimes to take someone like you and and the natural element of your game. You are a more offensive-minded defenseman, right? Yeah, well, and I think that's because growing up, like, I was a forward, like, okay. up until I was about 13. Okay. So then after that, I switched to defense, but I was like, okay, like, whatever. And then actually my 16 yeah. u year, which is very recent to be playing yeah. forward. Yeah, yeah, Like, 16 u because uh, of COVID, we had, like, no guys. Like, it okay. was super weird. So, like, half the game I was playing forward, and then when a D would be tired, I'd go back and play D. Like, okay. so it's all over the place, and then – Whenever I went to the USHL, that's when they were kind of like, all right, like, you're a defenseman. Like, you're not that skilled. Like, I, I was just, whatever, playing against kids that obviously weren't that great then. But then, yeah, I went to the USHL and they're like, all right, defenseman. But I still had some offensive playing here and there in the USHL. And then, but yeah, once I got here, they kind of just wanted me to play defense. And I mean, these are the smartest coaches in the country. Like, I'm going to do exactly what they say. Exactly. And I, and I think when it comes down to it, you know, that's kind of where you, you need to kind of trust it, It's the trust. It's the McDermott trust the process type thing. Right. Yeah. You know, but it's still gotta be a little tough for you. And, and, and listen, you're somebody who obviously you'll embrace and you're very coachable. I can, I can tell as well. Oh, but I didn't know that, that you played forward up until 13 right now, you know, you probably started playing hockey when you were what, five or six years old. So your whole foundation was that right. Like, you know, my son, for example, Deacon plays uh, wing, predominantly some center, you know, but, and he's 10 and he's been playing for four or five years. So if he's up to 13, right, and all of a sudden he goes to defense, I give you even more credit because that's not easy to adapt. And what is, what's harder to adapt is the mental aspect of it. And it's not easy for someone to say to you, like, I'm going to rewind and quote <laughs> what you just said a minute ago, you don't have the skills. Like, yeah. How, how do you take that? I'd be like, I'm sorry, what'd you say? You know, like, well, yeah, I mean, I'm not a type of guy to be like, oh, like, whatever, I have skill and stuff. But, like, I mean, I see it. Like, I, I'm surrounded by it. Like, okay. once you get to juniors, especially in the USHL and college, like, okay. you're surrounded by the best players in the country, okay. in the world. So, it's like, oh, yeah, he does have more skill than me. Okay. Like, I just had I had skill for the junior Sabres at the time. And we were a great team. But, like, I mean, I didn't have skill. Like, I, I don't have skill. Like, I, I have a little bit of here and there. But. I'm more of a defenseman, defensive defenseman, and I love it. I mean, that that's, keeps a, me that's a super humble answer, man. And, and you know, that's a very honest, humble answer and, and respect, <laughs> you know. And, you know, to, to say that because I think, you know, and when people hear drafted, they, they you know, they're like, there's there's immediately this uh, this persona or image then that you almost have to transform into overnight. And did you feel that way? I mean, you seem like a pretty cool laid back guy. I'm sure you're getting flooded. Your buddies are all like, you know, it goes from this. Here's what it goes from. Hey, man, I got a friend. Yeah, Geary, man, he plays for the Junior Sabres. He's a real good player, you know, and now he goes to Michigan State, you know, and and now all of a sudden, oh, yeah, dude, my buddy uh, plays for the, you know, he's in the NHL. He got drafted, right? And you know that's how people are. Oh, yeah, especially, and, and, yeah, and, they don't know. You know, in a few years, when, when, you're, when you're restructuring and the big contract comes, then you yeah. got even more, but, you know, buddies asking for loans. So, like, how, how has it changed things, man? Like, has it at all, or is it too early to say that? No, I mean – it hasn't changed anything for me. I mean, I think I look at it like hockey is such a long road. Like, yeah, it is. You yeah. never know. I mean, my brother played. I mean, he wasn't good, but like he played with great players and good. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't like the best. Shout out to your brother. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but like he played with great players, and like you see, like they're great at nineteen twenty, and they still have like long careers. Like it takes them a while to get to the NHL. Like, yeah. So it's a long road. So, like, I don't really think about it like that. I, like, being drafted doesn't mean anything until you play in the NHL, you know, type thing. So, I mean, it's great for sure. But until I play my first NHL game, I don't think it really means too much. You look at it more as, all right, now it's time to really start working. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, well, I like to say I've been working for the past few years. But, like, yeah, now it's like, okay. like It's go time. And, and yeah. I mean that sincerely, you know, like, because, yeah, you were you were good enough to get to this point. 
And now it's go show and prove because now yeah. you're with the big dogs. Right? And now mm -hmm. you have to filter yourself out, man. I saw at Sabres camp, that was amazing. There was an article of Channel 2 or whatever. Eight local Buffalo guys, I think, are with teams right now, right? Yeah, yeah. I I think we, we had six there from the Junior Sabres alone. And Just, like, oh, there's so many Junior Sabres guys at other NHL development camps. Like a ton of Buffalo guys. Like, yeah, you talked about Donnie. Like, he's another guy guys like it's and it's only gonna get harder like for sure well yeah yeah and and then i watched a little bit of joey's you know with the sharks i watched a little bit and i was glad to see him i think he netted one i i think i think musty netted one you know and these guys were playing well yeah you know, so they weren't just there and invited and hey here you know showing up and and somebody to check into the boards right like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> somebody to go break ankles by they they're they're playing well they're competing yeah. and um there's really that sense of pride that comes out too, you know, the Boston kid, Hamburg kid, you know, and, and, and just all these local guys. It's such an inspiration, man, for somebody like me who has a 10 year old, an eight year old and a four year old, you yeah. know, and, and I'm going to like, I, I, that's why I was so excited to be honest, Pat, I was so excited to, to interview you because of that reason, selfishly for my own son. I can't wait for him to watch this. And just to get my point across here, man, it's it's really, you should be very, very proud of what you're doing, not only on the ice, but for the community. So Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, yeah, I think like, it kind of goes back, like when we were younger, like all of like, like we had this big hockey group and it's like, we've all kind of like stuck together. Like, I mean, I've been friends with Maldoni forever. Like Liam Lezikowski, he's at Maine. He's a great player. Like we all have these great players and it's kind of like, like, we all kind of realize, like, all right, like, we could kind of do this, like, go yeah. for free. And like, then you never know because you go overseas and then you can make great money over there anyway. Oh, man, and, and that's the thing, too. I love that you just said that. Like, the road doesn't end. If, for example, let me give you a good example, man. Uh, you know who Nick Schmaltz is? Yeah. For the uh, Coyotes? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So his brother, Jordan, uh, I had on the show. His oh, brother, okay. Jordan, was a really high draft pick. Second round, maybe he was, you know, the anticipation of him going in, like he was hyped up, right? I had him on dude, I'll, you know, injuries happened and it went from, okay, you know, I'm going to have a professional hockey career in the NHL. Like he was a no doubt NHLer, you know, he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't, Hey, it was more of a, you know what I'm saying? And got injured really early in every year, kept trying to rehab, finally did get up, played, you know, cup of coffee with the with the blues I want to say and and his career you know he finally got to the point where he's like this isn't going to work I'm just never going to get there well he took that positivity he he may have went overseas for a year I can't remember. I think he did to be honest yeah yeah usually got yeah 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 he made a little money and 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 mm -hmm. came back and now he's got a line of golf and hockey apparel called butter and he's doing oh, it. Yeah. And, and he's killing it dude and he's a cool dude you know so like there's so many obviously it opens so many more doors and yeah and what I've realized is hockey is so connected like so connected. everybody knows everybody like it, it's ridiculous and that's the nice thing about hockey is like i could talk to guys that i played with my first year in juniors and it's like we never left you know so it's like it's crazy how that all does happen actually when you can pick up right where you left off with a conversation that's 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 brotherhood okay I good back to my first game like i didn't play a shift my first game yeah. second game first shift i go out take a penalty second shift I give it up. They score like it. Like I had a terrible two first two games, yeah. and then I sat the whole next month. Like I was healthy, scratched or whatever. So that was obviously tough. And then we just had a guy go down, and I just got lucky to get thrown in. And it was like, think about, think about what you just said, though. Like you, you came out your first game penalty, second game give the puck up, they score. Healthy scratch for a month. Did you pout? No. Did, did you? Because no, I was scratched in juniors too, so I know what it was felt like. <laughs> right, but but you but you said, all right, man. This you you took ownership of that. You took responsibility of that, and you were like, man, that's on me. I took the penalty. I gave that goal up. I see why they're sitting me out, and and that's what younger kids need to understand, man. It doesn't mean you suck or you're not talented. It means that you're human and yeah. you have nerves and you made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So what did you do for that month? You probably worked your you know, off yeah. and just, and just went at it. And then when you came back, you know, you never want anybody to get hurt, but fortunately for you, someone did, and they went down and it's next man up mentality. And then you got to step up, man. So like yeah. that, you just said, I mean, it gives me chills. Like it's yeah. that right yeah. there. No, seriously. I mean, it's that right there, that attitude, man, that, that just, that's what you need to have. And that's why you yeah. are, you know, where you are, man. It's here. All right. So getting into some more fun type questions, right? Um, Cause I could hammer you all day and, and compliment you all day on, on your capacity <laughs> and your, in your work ethic. But uh, I think that much is obvious, man, because you are where you are. Right. So what comes next? So like, for example, you get drafted, 
There is a lot of fans out there that think, all right, yeah, I'll see you, man. I'll see you in September. Uh, yeah. You'll be yeah. on the line with Darlene and, and, uh, and Owen, right? Like, that's what people think. Like, they're just oh, not, yeah. you know, they're not that educated with sport, whatever. So what comes next? Where are you going? What are you doing? What's your plan? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm back at school, so. Are you back? You're at school now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They've had here since, well, whatever. After development camp, I had to come straight here. You got so we're so we're in the dorm room there. Oh uh, yeah, we are. Yeah, we got a peek inside the dorm room there, man. I mean, we got, we got your shoes up on the side. Here. Yeah, well, we're very fortunate here. We're not in dorm rooms; we're in apartments. But uh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so you, sure, but a lister, a lister. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like right now, like I'm just here, and I mean, I, I'm hoping to. I don't know because it's now it's all up to the Sabers, so it's like I mean it would be fantastic for me to leave after my junior year. That'd be ideal, I think, but. They wanted to play four years here. That's also great. Like, I love it here. I have no problem playing four yeah. years here. But, yeah, it's kind of just, like, up to the Sabres now and whatever they want me to do. And, big like, I, I don't know. Like, I, I think definitely I started the AHL. So, it all depends on Rochester, too. So, it's like there's so many different moving parts and hockey's crazy. You'd never know what could happen. Like, it's so different. So, it's kind of just, like, just work now and just see what happens, really. So for the average fan that that doesn't know, you're drafted, so the Sabres have the rights to you. So you go back to Michigan State, yeah. and you kind of just start going to classes, and you yeah. start, you know, like every other student, and you prepare for your games, right? And you continue mm -hmm. to play, and I don't know if you guys are practicing yet there, or you're sure you yeah. should start. Mm -hmm. And then at any point, what is it? The Sabres can call you and say, hey, we want you down with Rochester, or we want you here or there. I mean... I guess give us an insight on that, or 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 do you even know, right? Like like where? Yeah. Uh, like I kind of so like college is very different because like you get the guys in the CHL, like they could sign right away, and then it's kind of like you could go wherever at that point. You could go down to their American, you know, up to their NHL, yeah, whatever. Okay, so it's like, it. yep, yep. So like college is like it's almost like it's a done deal. It's like you're ready for the NHL. Or it's like AHL, they have a plan. You're gonna play a few games there, learn it, then go up to the NHL. So it's almost like kind of has to be like you're going to play or it's like you're not going to play so right. especially because i mean like the sabers love the uh michigan state like they drafted my roommate he uh second round last year like so like they love michigan so we have one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the country like trains all the hughes brothers like okay. it's crazy like he's yeah. the smart like they want us here for as long as they possibly can without yeah. overdoing it type thing. It's kind of free. It, it's free, uh, how, right? Like it's free training. Free development. Free development. Yeah, no, really, it is. And that's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, And they get to see it up close. Like they're at every single one of our games. I mean, granted, we only play 32. So it's like, it's not really crazy for them to be at 90% of those games type thing, or at least one guy. This place, Munn is filled up with NHL scouts every night just because they know who the coaches are and they know who the strength and conditioning coach is. Every kid's going to develop unbelievable here. And that's exactly what they do. You become a 10 times better hockey player leaving this place each year. And wow. then you just got to keep growing each year after that. And eventually you'll hit your potential. Right. So yeah. yeah, like that's kind of the whole goal. So it's like, yeah, just kind of work here, grind here. And I mean, it's not like, Oh, I'm just only developing here. Like I want to go win a national championship. Like I have so many things that like, I still want to do at Michigan State before I even leave. So it's like, I'm going to be here for however long, and I just got to make most of it while you're, I'm here. You're, you're embracing it and going for the ride, man. And, yeah. you know, to just to have the opportunity, it sounds like you're very grateful, you know, and, and that's yeah. what I'm hearing in your sentiment. It sounds like you're very grateful to be where you are, and you're going to embrace it and do whatever is needed and just continue to, 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 to work hard. Buffalo guy, dude. So let's talk for one second, you know, because we're going to have a national audience on this thing. Let's talk about <laughs> wings for a second right so shout out elmos one of my biggest sponsors and robbie ray turned me on to them shout out to meredith and and robbie for that what's your favorite chicken wing in the area and have you had elmos i have not had elmos bro so where is it exactly like what like over by ub khalil mack kind of put it on the map oh uh, okay because so, yeah, they I'm were ever out that way like, I, I wasn't either i will oh. take trips just to go out there now to to grab these things there oh the, really these Cajun double dipped, man. You will have wings with me at some point. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah, for sure. I'd love to go there. Yeah. Yeah. If there was some way I could get them out to uh, Michigan State with them still being fresh, uh, I don't know how they'll do in that. Song. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's like the best part about coming home, honestly. It's just like, I have this, you know, Brunner's Eatery? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Like, I, that's the first thing I go and get. Is yeah. Eat the wings and a sub from there. Like, it's the best. But I think, I mean, it's hard to say Barbell's not the best, but I also love Duff's. I love Duff's too. Duff's is super underrated, man. Like if you yeah. order a pizza, what are your toppings you put on it? Pepperoni. 
You're just a cheese and pep guy. Yeah, I mean, maybe like sausage and uh, banana peppers, but... Yeah, that's a special occasion. I'm with you. I'm like a cheese and pep. It does the pepperonis the right way where they burn them and you got the, the, the oil in the cup. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's got to be a burnt pepperoni. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, this was awesome, man. So it was great. Thanks for taking the time and uh, we'll keep in touch, man. Have a great day. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate it. Have a good one. All right, man. Take care. Bye-bye.